Hi guys, it's uh, late April and I'm out in my apple orchard and I have about uh, maybe 70 trees to prune and I like to get this done usually before growth starts. Even though I can prune into June, the, when it gets that late, the leaves are out and it's difficult to see what you're doing. But in addition to that, uh, what I'm pruning at this time of the year, the buds are beginning to swell. We're at about green tip right now, so the buds are and the, the leaves are starting to just begin to show some green color. And as I prune now, I will start to knock off buds more easily. So I try to get this done before growth starts. Now I did something different this year. Um, what I decided to do is go through the whole orchard and do all the major cuts. And then my wife and my daughter, who are both nurses, they come in behind me and do some of the detail work. And then I follow them to make sure everything is the way it should be. Uh, since I'm a horticulturist, I'm El Jefe out here, which means I'm the boss. So my daughter, when she's in the emergency room, she does her thing. My wife works in uh, public health right now. She was a labor and delivery nurse for about 30 something years. And, uh, but me, I'm the Kang out here. So uh, they kind of follow my instruction. Okay, so much for the, the uh, sexist jokes. But anyway, moving on. Um, <clears throat> Once I make all the major cuts, I come back in and uh, make the additional cuts and I'll talk about those in other um, pruning videos. But what I want to do is show you some of the things that happens when you make cuts. So let's go take a look at the tree. Now this tree behind me is an apple on an M7A and this is the one I'm going to prune and I'll give you information as to how long it takes to prune. But I want to direct your attention over here And you can see these branches that are growing straight up. Those are called water sprouts. And this water sprout here grew last year. And if you don't remove it by the following year, it is big as the first ones that I showed you. Those were only two years old. So I'm going to take those out. Another thing that I wanted to show you is when you cut a branch, you usually will have growth nearest that cut so you can see one two three four five little branches that have grown out of that cut and just below here you can see another one where i cut off the branch here last year and buds developed here and those are going to have to be removed too they are on various parts of the tree here's another branch this was a water sprout here that i cut off and you can see the regrowth there now this cut was made maybe a couple of years ago. This was called a bench cut. This was the bud that was directing the growth to the outside. And that's what it did. I wanted it to go that way. But you can see there are other branches that have grown in as a result of that. Big one right here. Those all have to be taken out this year. Here's an example of a bench cut. And one of the reasons we want to do that bench cut is to direct the growth out away from the middle of the tree. But you can see it also causes additional branching, which will, some of those branches, will be used to produce fruit. Now, this tree, as I mentioned before, is a tree that has not had the major cuts. But over here, I have a tree that I have already made the major cuts and I have to come back in and do some trimming. And you can see, I've opened that tree up quite a bit. So this is the tree before I make any major cuts. And I will start at the, the largest ones first and start to reduce the overall height of the tree. In previous videos, when I was uh, thinning my uh, fruiting spurs, I would always suggest taking out downward growing buds like this one like right here. And this happens to be a vegetative bud, and this is a vegetative bud, as opposed to a fruiting bud over here. Now 
like this one right here. If you don't remove those downward growing buds, you have this type of a situation. Here's one here, and here's a larger one here. And those need to be taken out. And what they do is they tend to grow right up toward the light. Now, I've removed most of the large, major upward growing branches that I showed you before. And let me just step out of the way here for a second so you can see the tree. Now, there's still quite a bit to do, but because this, there's a lot of useless growth in the middle, I'm going to go back into the tree and clear out some of those branches that will make it easier for me to uh, prune some of the larger branches toward the inside. Because normally what I like to do is I'll start in the middle of the tree and then work my way out and then I'll go around the edge all the way around the edge of the tree to finish it up but um, you don't have to do that I just try to have a method to what I'm doing oh you'll notice I'm wearing safety glasses uh, it's a good idea to have safety glasses when you're in the orchard and you never know if you're not paying attention you can poke yourself in the eye with a small branch and that would not be a good thing so wear the safety glasses they're really inexpensive you can pick them up at any hardware store Now I've cleared the interior somewhat and I'm now going to work my way around the outside and this is the branch I'm going to start on. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of things that are growing straight up. Like this branch right here, this branch right here, this branch right here, this branch here and here. So I just take those out. Anything growing straight up goes. Now occasionally you will have a uh, fruiting spur, well, I should say occasionally, quite often, you'll have fruiting spurs that are growing straight up. But uh, if there aren't a lot on the branch, then I will leave some there. But if there are plenty on the sides where I'd like to have them, then I will take out the fruiting spurs that are growing straight up also, since you generally have to do some removal of spurs because otherwise you'll have too many. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, this branch is growing to grow across that. If there's fruit on here, it's gonna bang, it's gonna damage the fruit. So I don't want the crossing branches, so this branch is gonna go. Now, branches that are growing under here like this, I usually take out uh, because one, when it has fruit on it, it hangs down even lower. If I'm trying to mulch through here, I can't get under the lower branches, so generally I will take these out. The only time I will leave them is if, again, if I don't have a lot of fruiting buds, and there are some on here, then I may leave those. But that's not the case here. I have plenty of buds here. There's one that's going straight up. This one's kind of curved. It's going to cross this branch. It's not going to do anything but grow vegetatively this year. So that's going out. Dead wood here. This branch isn't going to produce any fruit. It's been chewed on a lot by the deer. I can see where they chewed on it here and here and here. It's pretty short. It's down fairly low. I don't really need it, so it's going out also. This particular branch right here is going to grow right over this one. So I could either shorten it to this area and go off in that direction if I wanted to. Um, that's a, a judgment call on your part. You can always come back. This, this time, I think what I'm going to do is just shorten it. See what it does. It has room to grow. Now these branches, this branch here and this branch over here, they're growing out into the row. Now there are a couple of things I could do. I could just trim them back or just go around them when I'm driving. This one is really getting out into the row. So what I want to do is direct its growth at least sideways over in this direction. So I'm trimming it to a side bud that's going to take it that way. Should be a little lower in that cut. And that's pretty much all I need to do on this particular branch. And then I will just keep on going around the tree. I've been at this for about an hour now and this side of the tree is pretty much completed. Now that hour includes all the videotaping so uh, it probably would be a little bit less. So. This is the uh, side of the tree that's still yet to be done over here. And I should finish that up in about 20 minutes. All right, I'm taking this branch completely out. 
I'm going to take it to this branch because I don't want it growing out into the row. It makes it more difficult when I spray. This branch is okay. This one I'm taking out because it's straight up. This one I'm taking out is because it's below this one. It's going to be shaded. This is a stronger branch. So this is going and it, it wouldn't produce any fruit anyway. Those are vegetative buds. Now this is kind of growing up. I don't really need it, so I'm going to take that out. I'm de directing this growth outward a little bit, but then I'm going to look for a bud that's going to go back over in this direction, so I'm going to go with this one. All right, now we still have a branch above this one, so I'm going to take this one out. I am going to shorten this one just in case I want to get some fruit from this one, so I'm going to take it back to a bud that's going out in this direction. This bud, it could go or it could stay. I tend to prune a little heavier this year, so it's going out. Okay, this one back here is gonna go. This one's going almost straight up, very vigorous, so that's going. This one's going straight up, it's going. This one's going straight up about three to four feet, so this is gonna go back to this one. It's about the limit I can do with my hands. This one's underneath, so it's going. I don't want this one. It's parallel to a branch. This was an old uh, spur, but there's maybe a terminal fruiting bud there, so, but it's going off in this direction, so I don't want it. This is off, all this little tiny stuff. Now these two branches are going down. They look kind of interesting. And what will happen is this will go down and probably curve up. I'll take it up next year, but I'm just going to take out one of these. This one needs to be shortened. I want this branch to go out in this direction, so I'm going to go back to this bud here. And hopefully that bud will survive. Otherwise, who knows which way it'll go. This is an old fruiting spur also that's starting to turn into a branch. Don't really need it. And this one... What do I want to do here? I think I'll take this one out in the middle and I'll save this branch. And I need it to go off in some direction. Let's put it to this bud and see which way, see what comes out of it. We can always take it out next year if we don't like it. This we're taking out. This one I'm gonna take out. Again, I'm gonna direct my bud which way I wanna go. I'll go to this bud here. Not much on here anyway. Too many branches here, so I'm going to clear some of them out. Yeah, it's a lot, but this tree can handle this. I didn't take off hardly any fruit buds at all because there aren't very many on this portion of the tree. And then I'll just continue on around. The tree's finished now, and as you can see, I removed quite a bit of material. And uh, I do a severe pruning about every two years. This tree now is no taller than about seven foot at, at the highest point and is easily manageable. Now, this year, I'm going to do something a little different. Because I prune so severely, I can expect to have a lot of regrowth this year, like I showed you a little bit earlier. So what I'm going to do is, while the, the new growth is real supple, once a week or so, I'm going to come through here and just tear it off with my hand, and I won't have to worry about so many suckers to deal with the following year. So we'll see how that works out, and hopefully I can decrease the amount of pruning I'll have to do next year. So I'm um, on to my uh, apricot tree. I'm um, training a new apricot tree, and this is the second year, and that's probably going to be my next video. See you later.